Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video. My name is Aaron Smith and I just wanted to take a moment and share with you uh, some resources that are available to those studying for their CCNA exam. Recently I've seen some posts and some comments in um, blogs as well as user groups regarding um, you know what kind of resources are available out on the web uh, if you're starting out and just need to uh, you know watch some videos or see some content uh, regarding uh, you know the, just the basics of networking um, so there's some really cool uh, games that I came across uh, a while back when I was studying for my CCNA uh, on the Cisco Learning Network um, these are of course put out by Cisco and um, they got some really fun, cool little, I believe they're flash games, but um, they kind of just help uh, reinforce some of the basics of uh, subnetting, uh, binary uh, subnetting down here, binary numbers, um, some basic wireless concepts. I played this one the other night. This was uh, new to me. I'd, I'd come to this site well, about six months ago, and it seems like they've added a whole bunch of uh, new stuff but um and now most of it is free i think uh this one here's the only one that has a cost associated with it it's like 49 dollars but um anyway the rest are free and uh this guy right here this is kind of fun and it helps um get your mind going and go uh, helps you to practice uh at uh, binary conversion uh, and helps you to get to the point where you can do it quickly um this one here is, of course, a subnetting game. It's kind of fun. All, all these seem to have like a space or sci-fi theme. But uh, this one uh, I played the other night was was pretty cool. Uh, I've never really played with any Cisco wireless hardware, but uh, this is a great little uh, intro to uh, access points, uh, bridges, repeaters. Uh, and also the different kinds of antennas that you can attach to access points uh, to allow them, you know, a certain kind of spread or coverage in a particular kind of room or, or floor plan. So um, it, it was really quite cool. It's a kind of more of a like a puzzle game. Once you figure out what all the different devices do, you need to kind of connect them or connect the dots in such a way that you can get everything connected in a room and get all the users and aliens connected. So anyway, it was uh, pretty fun, uh, pretty you know mentally stimulating, and and you actually learn something in it too. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm going to go through these three here. Uh, I haven't, I've done this one as well. It's it's similar to the subnetting game, but it's uh, more of a troubleshooting game in that you have to kind of document what you're working on and then submit that at the end. And there were some users who were frustrated in that you know they they did everything right, but just because they didn't um, spell it out in their or document the tickets, you know, just so uh, it wouldn't allow them to continue or something along those lines. So a bit of a design flaw I would say but but it's still you know a worthwhile uh, game don't want to disparage the developers or anything but um, anyway uh, if you're a wireless or sorry if you're a, um, a VoIP guy this would be or somebody pursuing their uh, a VoIP you know certification uh, this would uh, would be something you want to look at as well okay so let's go ahead and uh, start off with this one here this binary game I'm going to try and go quickly here. I, I know I chatter a bit too much, but um, try and do this real quick. Okay, and uh, this is something I always do is kill that music. It's kind of annoying. Um, so the key thing here is you got to, um, if it has a value in this box, you need to flip these bits so that it equals the value. If the box is empty, you need to click on the box and then type in the value and then the line goes away and as you you know these are coming every so often and they'll start to stack up and once they reach the top then you lose and it's game over so um let's see 248 uh, 12 okay 
32, 12, 37, oh, let's go 36, 37, 4, and if anytime you get it all the way to the bottom, it's like board clear or something. To some of these are easier than others, but but it's really good in that it helps you to uh, get the um, the binary conversions quickly because this is something you'll need during the test. Uh, oh, okay. Well, what's this one? Thirteen. Two forty-eight. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to say end game, we'll say yes, and then you just got to close this tab to go back to the uh, main screen here. So that's the binary game. What's, what's cool about this is, it um, doesn't say anything about it here, but uh, they uh, they also have it for, uh, I know for the Android, you know, I put it on my Android tablet, and um, you get it on your phone, your tablet. I would assume, uh, you know, the iPhone, iPad as well. But um, yeah, it's a fun little game. Keeps your mind active, and it uh, helps you with your binary numbers so that you know you always stay prepped for that upcoming exam. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Let's go back to games. All right, uh, next one I want to look at is this subnetting game. This is. A game that um, has a, a kind of an Area 51 theme in it, and you got to go and, and subnet all these different areas of the base. And the smaller ones have, you know, fewer subnets, and the larger ones have more subnets, and and so forth. So it has a big long tutorial, but um, I'll try and just go quickly through this to give you the idea. So I'm just going to go close out of this. All right, so you got you know different parts of the base. Let's go here. Oh, this has music as well. Kill that. All right, one cool thing about this uh, that I found when I was prepping for the exam, it's a nice uh, graphical display here of a uh, octet, so zero through two fifty-five. And as you plug in the number here, it's going to slice and dice this and show you equal portions of this entire um, octet so that you can, it'll, you'll see the different subnets and as you assign values to these down here it will um, it'll highlight those areas in different colors and so forth so on here they want us to subnet two areas so we need two subnets so we're just going to go uh, 128 set and you can see there's a, a thing that chops it in half here. So that's the end of this subnet and there's the end of this subnet. So they want us to put in the uh, network IP for the first subnet. Say zero. Boom. And it pops in a router there and it puts in a little yellow tick right there. Okay. Broadcast IP address is 127. Bingo. So put one in right there. And then down here uh, for the router. Let's say one. Boom, there it is. And then here's the four devices. Since it says the work order is for four computers each in two areas that need their own subnets. So four PCs here, four PCs here. So once you get it all right, then it goes boom and it, it throws in four here. You see these red marks are for the four. And then the rest, all this aqua, is available uh, IP addresses in this subnet. So then we move on to this one. And we click in here. Network IP address is 128. Bingo. Puts in a yellow tick there. Uh, broadcast 255. Puts a yellow tick out there. And then this uh, the router address will say 129. 
bingo says we did it you can see behind here there's the four computers that are red and then the rest of the addresses are aqua meaning available okay so a green check here means that we completed this one and um, yeah that's pretty much it as you go along and do the other areas you have a certain time limit to do all these and if you don't go quick enough some of the areas will get hacked and you'll see when you finish up with one you'll come back and it'll say hacked and then you gotta click on it again and find out what's wrong with it what got screwed up or deleted or what have you and then fix it you gotta do all this in a certain time frame so it's it's good in that it you know kinda forces you to race against the clock which is exactly what the exam is big race against the clock um, so I would highly recommend this as well as the binary game and then this other wireless one was kinda fun more fun uh, and uh, educational than it was, you know, as a prep for the uh, uh, ICND one or ICND two or the uh, the full exam. Um, but uh, anyway, it's uh, let's go ahead and try this. Again, a sci-fi sci theme here. So you're aboard this big star cruiser and you picked up some aliens and gosh they even got like desktop wallpapers for this. But um so similar to working with wireless in real life, you're gonna be looking at a floor plan. So here's a big floor plan of this starship and then here's a room and looking from the top elevation and the side elevation. But um we'll just say begin. It's real basic. This first one, you know, kind of walks you through stuff here. Later on, you're kind of more left on your own. But, okay, so they want us to put some access points on these network drops and then put an antenna on them. And then, boom, kicks out a cloud to these aliens and they can now connect. So, we we'll do the same thing over here. And then we put it antenna on that bingo so now we can continue later on you get like a uh, directional antenna and then a yagi which you can dial in the, the the distance and the width of the signal this is more of a, a one directional kind of cloud um, but anyway uh, then and then also later you get like bridges and things like that which is kind of fun to play with level okay so we got an access point put an access point here and later on also you get like security issues you gotta come in here and you gotta say oh security and then you've got like open or web or 802.11 something or other um, this point out here. Put a thing on that. Bingo. So these walls somehow signals don't penetrate them. But oh yeah, it's repeater and a bridge. Those those are the uh, things you get to play with later on. Oh, and it's a bit of a race against time. You get bonus points if you complete the levels quickly. This one, I think, kind of tripped me up last time. Oh, yeah, here we get to play with the Yagi and the directional. Um, you can see the clock's ticking right here. Um, I'll put an access point here. I'll put a directional on this. I'll crank it over here. Those guys get it. We can only do two more. Okay. I think I may be screwed here, but we'll see. Yeah, I think I am. Anyway. Anyway, you get the point. 
there you get the idea. Let me show you this uh, Yagi. This is kind of cool. This isn't the right solution, but what's cool is you can you know you can tilt this guy around, and then you can dial in on the sides here. You can make the uh, the the beam really long, and in some cases you'll need to do that. Um, later on, you'll you'll see if you play with it. It's kind of cool, but anyway, so that's that's it. Uh, I'm gonna say end game. And what's another <laughs> kind of fun thing or funny thing is um they've got a certificate <laughs> that you can print out. That tells your score and all that on this uh, wireless game. <laughs> looks very official and I believe this is a spot where you put your name in but uh, it's kind of cool <laughs> kind of fun. I doubt you would uh, put this right next to your CCNA or CCNP certificate on the wall but anyway it's just something fun. Maybe something if this program is taught in high school this would be kind of fun for kids to print out. Oh pff, I don't want to save that. Alright um, so that is the wireless game, and um, yeah, some of these others. Um, there's a couple down here that are dealing with specific ASR routers. This one is the 1000 series. I think this one's the 9000. I'd like to play with these later and see. Yeah, there it is, 9000 series router. Play with these later and. Uh, check that out but anyway feel free to explore these I, I recommend them they're, they're fun and they're educational if you're getting tired of looking at books or watching videos online um, this would be a fun little diversion but yet you know you're still learning still <laughs> in the subject matter so take care uh, feel free to leave any comments down below and I will uh, talk to you later bye